It's an amazing thing that we've domesticated horses. If you think about their size and their power, the only reason that is possible is because horses are herd animals and they respect authority and defer to authority in the same way that human beings do. In other words, they're very social. My name is Nancy Henry, and I'm a professor of English at the University of Tennessee. I specialize in 19th century British literature and culture, and I'm also teaching a class which is called Horses in Literature and Culture, and I started with Jonathan Swift's Gulliver's Travels. Um, the fourth book of that is called The Voyage to the Wynnums, and it involves a world in which horses are in power. and. Uh, the humanoid figures called yahoos are their servants. And then I, I move on to Black like Beauty, um, which is the 19th century context, and then National Velvet. Students read the novel and then watch the film and start to think about adaptations. And to do that, they're using the Clarence Brown archives that are housed here at the library at the University of Tennessee. They, they were very excited to see things like the original script and um, you know other photographs of Elizabeth Taylor Growing up in Louisville, Kentucky, um, horses and horse racing were really a part of the culture. And I had the usual child's fascination with horses. Shortly before I moved to Tennessee, I adopted an off-the-track racehorse um, whose racing name was Questionnaire. She was a three-year-old thoroughbred born in Kentucky uh, with Secretariat in her bloodline. I think there's something of an oversimplified narrative, uh, which is that in the age of industrialization, steam came in, replaced horses. The 19th century was actually what I think of as the age of the horse. Horses are everywhere. In the film Barbie, the, the Ken figures who are realizing their patriarchal authority for the first time, I think what's going on is that they have misunderstood the symbolism of horses. That they're thinking about westerns and macho cowboys and I think what they have failed to understand is that those horses have actually in our own world become very, very associated with women and girls and, and feminine cultures. As horses became obsolete at the end of the 19th century, the previously all-male culture that had surrounded horses was ceded to two women. It's National Velvet from 1935. I was familiar with the film, which was made by Clarence Brown 10 years later, in which the fantasy of a young girl to ride in the Grand National um, comes true. One of the paradoxes almost of the 19th century is that people were learning to think of horses as almost as machines. But at the same time, um, seeing that kind of treatment began to raise awareness. And it was the worst of times for horses, but it also led to um, improvements. And literature, of course, also contributed to that. I have taught Black Beauty a few times over the past few years. It is actually a very disturbing book. Animal Protection Societies handed out copies of Black Beauty on the streets of New York. I've really been struck by students' response. They'll say, well, we never really thought about it from the horse's perspective before. And I guess that surprised me, um, but it also seemed like a wonderful power that, that literature can offer to, to students today.